Good morning. Welcome to the overview of the new FTX materials for the Project 1200. Thank you so much for being with us here today for this uh, webinar. So my name is John Paul Velasco. I'm an application development specialist based out of the Valencia office. Uh, below is my contact email if you need to get a hold of me with additional questions after this webinar. Also joining us today, we have Lee Dockstetter, who's the VP of Business Development, and he is the uh, project manager for the 1200. So starting off today, uh, here's an overview of what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about the printer, uh, then we're going to talk about the new FT FTX, uh, Vizia FTX materials and the applications. We're going to cover software for new materials, and we're going to cover the best practices for using these new materials. We're going to cover the FAQs, and then we're going to cover the questions, any questions you might have. So also I want to remind you, uh, we've already done a Project 1200 webinar, uh, and it can be found on the below link. It's on 3DS Central, uh, which is the same website you use for downloading the, uh, the software for the printer. And so that uh, presentation covers more of the post-processing and overview of the whole uh, the software for Geomagic Print uh, 1.0. So starting off, uh, the micro SLA is the, the f or the 1200 is the first of a new printer technology called micro SLA. Uh, there's eight technologies total. Uh, you guys might be familiar with PJP, MJP, and FTI. Uh, or SLA, and so it's important to know that this one is different than the other uh, seven. Some quick specifications about the printer. The build area is 43 by 27 by 150 millimeters. The resolution is 56 microns in the X and Y, and then the layer thickness is 30 microns. It's also important to note that the print speed can be up to 14 millimeters per hour, which is around 0.55 inches per hour. The system size is, is very small. It's about the size of a coffee maker. So starting off, there's now six available materials, uh, VisiJet materials available for the uh, 1200. There's the VisiJet FTX Green, which was the first one that was released uh, about a year ago now. And then there's the new ones are the FTX Cast, the FTX Gray, the FTX Clear, the FTX Silver, and the FTX Gold. So starting with the FTX Green, uh, this is the first material released. It's very easy to cast with a phosphate bonded investment. And this is an investment that's uh, popular with dental groups and with uh, people uh, printing uh, jewelry parts or casting jewelry parts uh, in platinum. That's when uh, phosphate bonded uh, investments are used. This material has a very uh, high detail uh, and it has a very smooth surface finish. The parts are very accurate uh, and it's a very tough material and it's very easy to build with. The next material we released is the FTX cast. And so it's easy to cast. Uh, it has the, uh, it's easy to cast using regular gypsum investment and gypsum investments are favored by jewelry uh, casters, so people who are printing or who are casting in gold and silver. Uh, this material will be much more natural for their process. It's a wax resin hybrid, which means the material properties are much closer to wax than it would be to the resin. Uh, so it will be uh, simpler to cast and, and easier to burn out than the uh, FTX green for jewelry applications. The next new materials we have are the FTX silver and gold. And these are uh, metallic materials, uh, and they're good for jewelry samples, uh, and they, they make very uh, shiny, shimmering parts. The next material is the FTX Clear. Uh, it's this water clear material. Uh, it's good for certain applications where the transparent material is necessary. And then the last new material is the FTX Gray. And this has a very uh, high contrast. It, because it's, it's opaque as opposed to transparent, it uh, allows you to see a lot of the details and features much better. So now we're going to cover markets. So the first market is dental and it's pressed ceramics, coping, bridges. Then we're going to cover jewelry, uh, then collectibles, and then prototyping. 
So the first market is dental, and so the important thing to know on that, uh, on, the, on the top right hand side you can see a print, and that print, uh, it's 10 to 12 units, or sorry, yeah, you can print 10 to 12 units in one hour, and the, the cost per unit comes down to about 50 cents. And so it's a very economical way to get started. The parts are very precise. Um, and it's also compatible with uh, all CAD CAM software uh, for dental. Uh, anything that can export an STL, it can take the file. The next market would be jewelry. And so jewelry is, uh, the key features of this material, uh, you'd want to use cast for this. And so the key features are that it's very fast, it's low cost. Uh, it has a uh, crisp detail and it's very smooth and it, it has an ash free burnout. It's, it's very similar to working with wax and we'll cover that more a little bit more in detail. So people who would be interested in this uh, are retailer uh, jewelers, uh, watch companies and fashion companies. Also with the new gold and silver material, uh, it's a metal looking plastic material. Uh, it has a, like a shiny shimmering finish. Uh, and it has the, the detail. So the thoughts behind this is if you're going to cast a part that uh, is going to be like a $10,000 ring, uh, you might want to print out uh, a demo part for them to see that they can hold on to and, and see all the details and check and make sure it's exactly how they want it before you go ahead and make the casting for it. Um, it it's just a quick way. You can build a ring like this in two hours so they can, while they're uh, you know, waiting, you can give them a ring and see if they like it, and then you can go back and change the design uh, and make one you like. So people who would be interested in this would be retail jewelers, watch companies, and fashion companies. The next market would be collectibles. Uh, and so you can make incredibly detailed uh, uh, figurines, models uh, very fast. Uh, and the, the parts can be castable if you use the green material. And so people who would be interested in this are 3D artists, video game developers, and toy companies. The other material that would be good for this industry would be gray, uh, and that's because it's an opaque material. There's a high contrast. You can see the detail much easier than you can on a uh, transparent or translucent material. So people who, again, would be interested are 3D artists, video game developers, and toy companies. So the next field would be prototyping, and so ideal for this would be clear and gray. Uh, it gives very sharp corners, uh, rigid material, and it's very transparent. Uh, so if you choose the clear, it's transparent, and they both build very fast. Uh, so companies that would be interested in this are connector companies and micro-injection molding companies. And so as you can see here, these connectors uh, in this picture uh, on the top left, uh, it actually has uh, square holes going through it, and so this part would be very difficult to machine or manufacture by traditional methods or to make the mold for it because it... Uh, the holes are square. There's no square way of there's no way of drilling square holes, and so it's I ideal for prototyping parts that would be more challenged to manufacture or machine. So now we're going to cover the new software for the uh, running the new materials. So the new software is called GeoMagic Print, and it's version 1.2. Uh, it's the same as 1.1, which is the version you were running to if you already have a 1200. It has the same features, uh, same layout, same controls. Uh, it has a couple new features, which is what we're going to cover right now. So starting off, the, the first uh, new feature is the ability to select new materials, obviously. And so you want to click the PR button in the top left of the screen, and then you want to select materials. And so you have the six materials. There's also some placeholders for potential new materials that we uh, might develop in the future. So you want to ignore those for right now and just use the uh, one of the available uh, materials. The next thing is the shrink compensation. And the important thing to note on that is the shrink comps, um, If they're different for each material. So if you have green in there, for instance, and you're printing with uh, FTX green, and you take it out and put cast, it will automatically adjust the shrink compensations for the new material. Also, if you need to customize your shrink compensation, so if you're building a part and you adjust the shrink comps to fit that particular application, um, it will actually store those shrink compensations for the next time you load that material in. So that's important to note is it will save uh, your own shrink comps. The next thing is the minimum support height. And so what this allows you to do is it, it specifies the distance uh, between the platform and the parts. And so you can, the standard's 0.9 millimeters, you can adjust that 
uh, to make it print farther away from the, the platform. And so reasons you'd want to do that are if you're if you're building uh, a part and you want to be able to get inside and remove the supports easier, you can tell it to build farther away from the platform and it will automatically support it differently. Um, so one of the parts we were building is it was a model and we wanted to cut the supports off with a flush cutting pair of, of uh, snips. And so what we would do is we told it to build farther away from the platform so you could actually get the cutters in there easier. And so in this top example, you can see it's 0.9 millimeters, and then I changed it to, point, or to 4 millimeters, and you can see it builds much farther from the platform. The next new feature for the software is the ability to generate support log. Uh, and so what this does is it allows you to uh, create the service log uh, and send it to service or your reseller to uh, do quick checks on the machine if you're having an issue. Also, we released new support uh, styles. So uh, before we had four support style sizes, now we have five, and they're actually in a broader range. So you have more options of how you want to support the parts. Uh, important to note the FTX cast material, because it has wax, um, it is not as strong. And so you want to make sure you uh, provide extra supports, which is why we gave you the option for thicker supports. At this point now, we're going to cover uh, best practices. So first off, safety. You want to wear gloves when handling this liquid material. It's a sensitizer, so if you handle it, if you, it gets on your skin too much, it can, you can become sensitive to the material. Uh, also, you want to make sure you do not open the cure chamber door when the UV light is on. It's a UV light. Uh, it can damage skin and eyes if you're exposed to too much of it. And for a full list of safety instructions, please refer to the Project 1200 User Guide on 3scentral.3dsystems.com. Uh, the next thing is changing materials. So it's very simple. You pull out the cartridge and insert the new one. The, the thing you want to be careful of is not to tear or damage the cartridge in this process. Uh, and you want to limit this. as uh, You don't want to do it uh, excess amounts uh, if it's not necessary. And you want to make sure you store the extra cartridges if there's still material in there that you want to build with. You want to store it in a dark place that's cool. And this is to prevent the, the photosensitive material from curing or from drying up. You also want to make sure wherever you uh, store it, it doesn't scratch or dent or damage the bottom film um, because then it will not print properly uh, when you reinsert the cartridge. The next thing is for flat, thin parts, you want to build them at an angle to reduce the curl. Uh, it's best, if possible, to use a 45-degree angle for uh, thin parts like this example here. Um, you will just want to make sure it will give you the least amount of curl and give you the most accurate parts uh, if you're doing uh, thin parts that are, are long. So the next thing we're going to cover is cleaning. Um, so if you want a full uh, procedure for post-processing, uh, please go back and review our other webinar. So parts are cleaned the same way uh, as the VisiJet FTX screen was cleaned. The, the new materials, uh, some of them are thicker, and so they will require additional bathing time. And so before the final curing, you want to make sure the parts are clean of resin and dry. And you can tell this by just looking and seeing if the part's wet after it's, it's dried off. Uh, and you want to clean it again if, if there is still some residual resin. Uh, we also recommend using different baths for each of these groups of materials. So gold and silver can use the same bath. Clear needs its own bath, gray needs its own bath, and then green and cast can use its own bath. Uh, and the reason why is you don't want to contaminate the parts. There's always going to be some residual resin inside the IPA baths, and you don't want to uh, put a part in there and have it be exposed to a different type of, of resin. Again, for the complete post-processing guide, please refer to the user manual or the other webinar on 3dscentral.3systems.com. The next important thing is uh, curing time. So the curing times are the same. They're going to be 10 minutes. Uh, if the parts are tacky after curing, you can always cure them for another 10 minutes, and it should remove the tackiness. Uh, another thing you want to be careful of is uh, if the, uh, the IPA baths are not clean, uh, the parts will not be cleaned properly, and therefore they'll still be tacky even after uh, post-curing. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is casting with the VisiJet FTX cast. So as we already mentioned, this material behaves very similar to a wax. It will cast 
uh, much easier um, than for jewelry applications than the FTX screen because uh, it, it, it was designed to be cast with a gypsum based investment. So uh, from the feedback we got from the jewelers when we were developing this material is it's it's a uh, you can, it feels very much like wax. It handles very similar to wax. They would use the same tools, uh, casting tools. They'd use their files and knives on this material just like they would on a wax part. The wax can be, uh, wax can be used to sprue and repair the part uh, after the building. And then the important thing for casting is you want to follow the procedure uh, from the manufacturer to the letter. Uh, we found, uh, we got some reports back that even if you change, uh, if the, the recipe calls for uh, ionized water as opposed to uh, tap water, it can affect the build strength or the, the, the strength of the investment by up to 70%. So you want to make sure you follow all those uh, guides and procedures uh, as, as closely as possible. The next thing is critical dimensions. So uh, the critical dimension and features should be oriented up facing. Um, so this is a little confusing because the parts are built upside down. So you want to make sure they're built uh, away from the supports, opposite side of the supports. And that the side, uh, opposite side of the supports will have the best uh, resolution. It will be the cleanest surface. It will be the, the best surface. So you want to make sure anything that's critical or important to that uh, model is built up facing. Next thing is the FTX silver and gold. It's best to orient the, the feature up facing, which means uh, away from the supports. And the reason why is we notice when you're, when you're building with the, the shiny pigment that's in the material, uh, it, it naturally orients itself in a way that makes the, the face uh, up-facing surface much more, uh, it gives it a better appearance. And so for this example, for the spring, you'd want to print the top way, not the bottom way. Another thing we notice when building with these materials, the cast material can change color during UV curing, but it will return back to its normal light green uh, over a day. Uh, and it doesn't, uh, it won't affect the material, it won't affect your casting processes, it's just something internal in the material. So another thing we noticed is when you're building with the FTX clear, um, it can be a little tacky, even if the part's cleaned and, and uh, before it goes to the post curing, it can be, uh, even though it's clean uh, and, and dry, it can still appear a little tacky, and that's normal and typical for this material only. So uh, go ahead and cure it, and it will remove all the tackiness. Next thing to note is the VBFs created in Geometric Print 1.1, which is the version you are running right now if you have a 1200, will not be usable with Geometric Print 1.2, so it's important to uh, note that you, can, you have to regenerate those VBFs. Also, printed VBFs will automatically be saved in under Documents. So uh, it's going to be under this PC, Documents, 3D System, Geomagic Print, and then Build. And so any VBF that you print directly to a printer and you want to go back and reprint it later, you can always go back to this directory and it'll have the, the VBFs there waiting. Another question we got a lot is, is it possible to build and UV cure at the same time? The answer is yes. Um, you can push the button on top while you're building and it will turn the curing uh, chamber on or you can go to the software and turn on the post-curing chamber. So we also get questions about maintenance of this machine. The best way to maintain this machine is to keep it clean. And some ways you can keep it clean are to avoid inserting and removing the cartridge, the same cartridge, multiple and multiple times. Every time you do, uh, you run the risk of, of possibly wearing out a cartridge, accidentally catching it on something that will scratch it or damage it, or, or in worst case scenario, cut open the cartridge and spill the material. Uh, so you want to limit the amount of times you insert and remove a cartridge. You also want to wipe the cartridge uh, clamp between uses just to prevent or to, to remove any residual material that might be there. Thank you so much for attending this webinar. Um, we really appreciate it. And at this point, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the questions bar on your right. And Lee and I will get through them as soon as we can. Thank you so much.